Well, I am here and I already like what I see. I see a bunch of pollinator attractants down here. I see actually a little plot of corn right there. There's a fig tree over there, but let's go and see what's actually going on. I see a sunflower. Oh, look who it is. Hi, Kev. What are you doing? Uh, just doing some gardening. It's always time to garden, you know. It's always time to garden. All right, let's take a look at this thing. All right, let's do it. So I'm here with my friend Iram, who I think I met in 2019. Correct. Probably on Instagram, you honestly. Did. Yes. But she's local here in San Diego, and we got to talking. We figured out we had some other friends in common. So you've been to my garden. I have. Once or twice. Once or twice. I have not been to her garden, so here I am for the very first time. It looks awesome. You're going to see it in a second. Thank you. But I'm curious, first of all, how did you get into gardening in the first place? Um, I grew up in the garden. I grew up with my dad being a gardener. Mm -hmm. uh, we grew our own fruit, our own vegetables. Uh, my grandma was a huge <laughs> papaya grower. Really? So, yes. So um, as a toddler, I was always in the garden. I lost it for a bit as a teenager and now with me having two children, mm -hmm. it was kind of important for me to grow my own food. Uh, I know where it's coming from and use the space that I have. So the space that I'm gonna show you right now, that all used to be grass, it used to be a um, tiny little grass area, but now, now you see that now it's you'll all. See, and you'll see in a second, there's a <laughs> ton of beds in here. So it's another great example. To me, at least, it reminds me of my old garden because it's smaller right. space. It's actually probably two or three times you as big as that You packed it in garden. as well. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you've really made good use of this space. Thank you. What I'm curious about is how much produce do you think you grow compared to what you used to buy at the grocery store? Um, Vegetable-wise, 40-50% of our vegetables come from the garden. Wow. Um, still not uh, growing our own fruit, which is a goal for me. Yeah, but not, which is also, not it's yet. harder. It's it longer is. term. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, here we are, baby. We, we are. are here in the, I suppose, a somewhat front yard garden here, right? Yes, mid yard. Okay. Here, let me show you so you've around. you've got the arch coming in right out of the gate. I do. I have the arch trellises here. I did a, I usually do peas during the fall and the winter. Yeah. Right now, we're going to do a little bit of the sweet peas until it gets a little cooler, and then I will do some peas. Let's here. talk for a second about the directionality of the garden. So okay. where's north, south, east, west? Okay, so we have south directly that way. Okay. So you get a little blockage from, from this. From the casita, yeah, that's yeah. correct. So we ha that's why I place everything that needs to have direct sun more than eight hours that way. Okay. And this over here will get it. As soon as the sun goes a little bit uh, west, then this will so get like it. So maybe 2, 3 p.m.? Yeah, okay. exactly. Got yeah. it. So you can put some like semi-shade tolerant stuff over that's there. That's correct, yeah. But, right. but I also do have um, most of my peppers here, which love the sun, but they're thriving. They're absolutely thriving. I have overwintered my um, Mad Hatter peppers. I overwintered, Great pepper. yes. Great pepper. My daughters pick them before yeah. school, take them to lunch. Um, I overwintered my habanero, which also went kind of crazy this year. Wow. Yeah, what I've noticed with my peppers, have you noticed this, is that yeah, they like sun, but they actually don't want like super midday heat. That, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, so that's why they're here. So right now they have zero sun, still thriving. That must be a San Diego thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm doing a early overwinter for my um, jalapeno. It was struggling. So that one's going to go to bed uh, until next year. So for you, that's just cut it down two thirds, take all the foliage off. That's correct. I just don't want it to produce. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to let it go into a early slumber. It's already trying to produce more and I just keep snipping it off. Mm -hmm. um, so because in San Diego, we're going to have a very warm fall. I put a lemon um, squash here. Mm -hmm. Those grow really tall. So I'm just going to put a support here for now. And then once it gets to um, about this height, then I'll stick it a little longer. Sure, sure. And the cool thing right here, since I figured out that it's going to be a hot, very hot fall, I put two chayotes in there and mm. now you see it peeping out of the soil. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, chayote, interesting squash because you bury the entire squash. That's correct. Yeah. I actually rooted it first and then put it in the soil. I did the same. Did you I really? I did the same. Yeah, awesome. exactly. Okay. All righty. Why don't we move on down to that bed we started at over here. Awesome. Let's take a look. So you're using what raised beds? I am. Me and, and my grow husband. bags. I am. I, uh, me and my husband built all of these raised beds according to the space that I had. Yeah. Um, we couldn't really fit that many if I made them bigger. So some of them are going to be a little bit in the width. Width wise, they're going to be smaller, mm. but they're going to be very long. Just tr try to pack it all in. Talk to me about the construction. It looks like a kind of a very classic design. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing like you know two by six. 
or two by two by ten, two by twelve. Yes, 12s. we we didn't do our research very well, but when we started uh, building the beds, we just did it ourselves with a YouTube video. You might see that there's some cracks and there's already some welting. Um, that's because we bought the cheapest wood we could find. Uh, did we you didn't Douglas fir. We probably did. Yeah. We just went to Home Depot yeah. and we oh that one looks good enough yeah. now we try and get redwood or we try to get like something more um uh, what is it called um what's the word kevin <laughs> that's the thing i always like when when i visit you or you visit me is you're always gardening yes. no matter what you can't stop pruning stuff you no can't stop doing no things. this it's already gonna bolt so i don't yeah. i don't want it to go to flower so yeah. i'm just gonna chop drop so this bit over here let's talk about it it looks like you've got some chard going on yeah it's more of like a kind of a fallish look to me. Yes, I, I actually pulled some squash from here and I was gonna pull all of this that you see the tomatoes. Um, I was gonna make it into my fall, add some tatsoi, some chichmisai, some brassicas. But like I said, we're in zone 10A in San Diego and it's gonna be very hot. Everything is gonna go to bolt. So I'm gonna do a second round of um, uh, summer crops and hope for the best see really. Happens. Yeah, awesome. see what happens, yeah. So I'm seeing something I really like right behind What's you, up? which is this sort of celery Oh, Magical yes. kingdom over here. So let's let's talk about this because a lot of people have problems growing celery. This is what happens actually. Um, it was a total complete accident. You just let one celery go to flower, mm -hmm. and then you can see what happens over there. It's so you, are you saying that this went to flower and seeded that? One of those went to flower and seeded all of that. Wow. And this is one of the ones that hit seeded, and I let this one go to flower just so I can do it again. And this is all just straight in the ground over there, That's right? correct. That that was, I was gonna uh, build another raised bed here. So I have my step pod here. Right next to the step pod, I was gonna just do a whole complete long raised bed yeah. made out of wood. But then this happened and I don't have the heart to actually um, get rid of it. And that's what, that's we what juice it's about it. anyways. We yeah. juice it a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you see, if you get a gift like this, you don't, you don't then destroy no, it. No, okay. I don't have the heart. Amazing. And then, yeah. So here we are at the sub pod, which yeah. a lot of people have or want to know about that's correct and i've got one but i'm curious what you think about yours um i absolutely love my sub pod um the bed you can fit quite i mean look at it I, you can fit a, quite a bit of stuff i have my tomato here i had another tomato there but then the watermelon just is taking over and it's kind of swirling around it mm. so that's going to be a watermelon tower i have my chamomile my cucumbers my um, okra peanuts they just love worm castings. So yeah, like how have you been operating in here for those who don't know? Okay, so what you can see here is I have it double lined because this is where all the worms are at right now. Okay, so um, this is your fill zone. That's correct. This is all complete worm castings that I have to harvest. Let's take a look at it. I mean, that looks pretty dang good to it's me. So There's good. little worms in there too, still. So. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. Nice. They all have to move this way. This is what I feed my food scraps this side. The left hand side is the food scraps, and over here is finished product. Yep. Um, I try and use a, a sifter to kind of get the worms out before I um, place them elsewhere. But have you noticed that the produce you're growing in the bed the sub pot is in? has performed better because how much nutrition is being cycled through? Absolutely. My watermelon is going absolutely insane. It's going everywhere, actually. Yeah. If you see a watermelon in every bed this way, it's just that one watermelon. It's the that's, same one it's the, right free, it's the same one. Yeah. And it goes all the way through. It has six um, lateral branches this way, and then it has this long branch going this way as wow. well. This is actually the uh, Moon and Star oh, watermelon. you're growing that. Yeah. Look at this guy. Beautiful. So this is on my list. I just have yet to grow it. Wow, that looks really good. It's really, really nice. good. I've harvested two okay. um, and they were on the younger side. I got ahead of myself. Um, so we only got to eat just the center, but I learned my lesson and now we're just going to wait until um, this part is a little bit, uh, sure. you know, a little brown. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I just harvested my first one yesterday. I did a second, um, a second row. I mean, a second, uh, help me out. Sewing. Sewing of corn. Uh, I've had a such good luck in this bed because it's direct sun the entire time and I like to put my grow oyas next to it. They're very thirsty crops. So, so these are your sub-irrigated little clay vessels, that right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah, so you fill them up with water and they release water very slowly as the plants need them. And being that corn is very thirsty, that helps me out a lot because I don't water every day. I water every three to four days. 
Uh, so that's that's been great for me. And so you're watering every three to four days and you, it looks like you don't have a lot of mulch on the bed, right? I don't, not right now, just because I just flipped this bed mm -hmm. and um, I just let the bed kind of settle in for two weeks. Now I have to add more uh, straw mulch. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So what do you got going on in this bed over here? In this this is a self-sown, this is a volunteer cucamelon and I don't have a trellis for it to grow on there. So I just bought one and put that there and it's taking over Look at these little guys already. So I have the cucamelons, I have some anise hyssop, I have some, um, it's a bell pepper red, uh, no, that one's a yellow and this is a, I believe a Merlot. Mm -hmm. And um, I just added these strawberries because it's not enough. The ones that I showed you over there are not enough. So the girls wanted more strawberries. I have some lettuce. I think this is called the Nevada. They're um, high heat tolerant. Right. Yeah. For us in the summer, in these high zones, you've got to have a high heat tolerant or yes. else you're, you're done for. So the Sierra and the Nev Nevada love heat. And um, I have my okra, which I am, I don't know if you know this, but I absolutely love. Do you like okra? I like okra, but I heard you like it straight up. I do. I, I enjoy it just uh, raw. Do you let's, not? Let's get the taste test. Crunch. All right. Let me try. Try it. Honestly, it's not bad. I mean, yeah. it's really sweet. I'm used to fried okra. Honestly, you just have to get over that initial it's sliminess. Slime. It's yeah. Slime. And it's a texture thing for most, most people because it's very like furry. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it. I like the sweetness of it. I like what it does to your digestive system. I feel like it's got to go down fast for me because the slime gets it, me. Yeah, most, most people do. This tomato is on its way out, but I'm just going to let these two guys um, it's a green tie dye mm. tomato. Just let those last guys yeah, go. Yeah, just yep. let them go and then I'll just succession. See some soak. eggplants over here? I do. These are a green tie long eggplant mm -hmm. um, overwintered as well. And they have been producing so much. I actually give most of it away. Yeah, and something interesting you guys might find is that when an eggplant goes overripe, it actually goes yellow like this. That's exactly which it. Which is really unique looking. So you kind of think you have a weird variety. Actually, you just missed your harvest window on your eggplant. I feel so bad. Like most of these are already, yeah. I need harvest. Worst ASAP. case, it goes in the worm compost. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Unfortunately, they do. Okay, so you got some grow bags here. I do. And was this just because maybe you didn't have enough space to slot in another raised bed? I didn't have enough space. I didn't have enough time. Wood has been insane right now, so I didn't really want to put my budget, my garden budget, into another raised bed. So mm. I've been doing these uh, GrowTech grow buckets, um, and I filled them in with some straw just because of the high heat right now. Yep. Uh, but yeah, they've been loving it. I mean, look at that tomato. That's a, a yellow pear. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to be really, really loving that area. And then it's we've got sun. my my favorite thing to see of all time. You gave me these clippings. These are so <laughs> nice looking. So you have. One, two, three, four, five flowers. Right. That's incredible. I had six and it was a boarding one, so I just clipped it off. Yeah. That one, I'm hoping that it, uh, I did it correctly, that I pollinated it correctly. I think and you that, did. did. Yeah, I, I think you, you did. Just, did you see yeah. how I pollinated yeah. it? Yeah, okay. I think you did. I mean, th these look really good. And I'm not sure if you know what these are, but. Uh, oh, the, oh, you got the epic six That's right. Okay. These need to go in the ground ASAP. Yeah, what are you growing in here? Sunflowers? I mean, a, a ton of sunflowers. Yeah. I wanted some fall sunflowers, but apparently now they're going to be um, summer 2.0 2. 2. sunflowers. Those are some, yeah, those are a little what we call stretched. Uh, <laughs> those are a little stretched. A out. little bit. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of your seating area over here. This is. Yeah. It, has, it has nice uh, sun all day. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Something over here it was really interesting because I saw you have a banana. It's a double mahoya banana, yes. Okay, and so why is it in that container right there? These containers right now, I'm actually gonna move them to the backyard. So they're, right now they're taking a, a slumber. This used to be where I would raise my monarchs. Um, I took a break from it. So this was all milkweed? That was all uh, milkweed. Then that's yeah. why it looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now what I'm doing is I needed, uh, I needed this double mahoya to root, so I'm using this raised bed for it to root and then I will cut it out put it into a large container and then get some some nanas. I like the idea of having like a small bed like this that you use as a cutting rooting zone that's correct that you can then just transplant out into somewhere else instead of having a bunch of little pots everywhere little tiny pots. which I also do have that but um, I wanted to use the space that I already have soil in and it's really good soil yeah I like it really cool all right I'm seeing a couple more grow bags or some interesting stuff actually let's talk about this right here Right. This is a cool, like if you're a small apartment gardener, 
this type of approach might make a lot of sense, right? Because you have these little separators. So what we do for a business is we, we have an estate sale company and a lot of the things that don't sell, I try to uh, use them up, right? Yeah. So I, <laughs> I took a dresser and just took the drawers out and put soil in it. And it's now my pollinator island. So I continuously switch up the flowers in it, but it's always filled with flowers. So this just used to be legitimately an old dresser. A dresser, yes. Yeah, and so you've got all sorts of stuff going on here. Yeah. So this is kind of like the approach that I'll do at my place with my green stock, because okay. I'll just fill that up with pollinators and let it be. Yeah, yeah. So you have a, this sort of spot right here that you'll let, oh, I see a watermelon in there actually. There is a watermelon <laughs> in there. It's a random one. I, I ran out of space, I was like, mm, oh, right behind you. Yeah. Oh yeah. All so, right. Yeah. Well, let's take a look then. So we're, we're kind of going around the perimeter. So let's finish that off and, and talk about this little grow bag here. These are, well, let me show you. I built these cages mm -hmm. for my indeterminate tomatoes, but when I am not using them, I've been just trialing them with beans, with peas, with etc. And um, that's just cattle panel in a, in a roll, right? And three um, zip ties. It's yeah. super easy to make. And the beans are loving it. Look at that. Yeah. These are fantastic looking. You should taste them. They're incredible. No, no real issues with having them climb at all? No real issues, but they do run out of uh, growing mm. space. So then I pull them downward and they just continue they to grow down. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, let's yeah. take a look then. It looks like you've got another one of these Oya type of things down here. Yes. But it looks a little different, huh? That's like a Mexican, um, like a cup. Yeah. Mexican Oya cup. Okay. And I have a friend who said, okay, I don't have the money for the real thing, the grow oh yes. Yeah. Um, so let me try and do it yourself, right? So that's what she came up with. She gave me a few, works the same. Really, it, all an Oya is is just a clay vessel that's with a top. So <laughs> that's the same thing as an Oya to me. The only thing is that for my beds, I do want the grow Oya because they they are much larger and I want the, the circumference to cover, I don't want to put like a million of these in a raised bed. Sure. So the grow Oya's actually work best for me in my grow, the grow bags. I like these, the grow Oya's in my raised beds. It just covers more space. Gotcha. Yeah. Rounding out the perimeter of yeah. Adam's garden here, what do we got? I have a gold bar squash here that I'm growing vertically. Um, I should have used something more sturdy than this, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I like to use what I got. So well, I- Talk to me about this, because most people don't grow a squash like that, right? Where they'll they'll pull it up a trellis or a stake. Well, it's all about learning about the varieties that you grow. So um, lemon squash, they grow vertically. Uh, gold bar squash, they grow vertically. So when you know the variety that you're growing, then it's easier for you. Instead of letting it just kind of droop down the bed, which I don't want to do since I already have such a limited space, you grow it upward. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and this one you can tell because it's got the tendrils on it, That's which correct. hopefully we can see right there. So you know it grows vertically. It's it's very, it almost looks like a little squash tree. It's kind of cool. It's a little squash tree, a little palm tree. Yeah. Um, so I have a bunch of uh, okra, tomatoes, and just sun loving varieties in this bed. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little bit of a cannabis going on here. I'm a newbie, but mm -hmm. I, tr I like to try new things. So grow bags only so far, it looks like for your cannabis. So far, yeah. um, I mean, it's alive. It's yep. not flowering yet, but I'm gonna try different different places. For now, grow bag, maybe next year I'll do a bed just for that. Got it. And then I see a bunch of sort of little containers and such strewn about here. Yeah, so the, um, Sunflowers that I'm growing in the six, what are they called? Epic six cells. Epic six cells. Um, I ran out of space over there, so I put them here and I'm gonna start to gift them. Um, I have some um, fruit trees that I propagated a long time ago. It's been about six months and they're ready to go into a bigger pot. This mm -hmm. is a guava, pomegranate, and a um, striped fig. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, well, now we got to kind of see the, the main show, which is this arch way that you've got going on. Ta-da! So yeah. here's the, the showstopper, I That's would say, right. of Iram's Garden. So let's, let's talk about how you built this archway. Uh, my husband and I actually used galvanized welded wire, and we just double layered it for reasons being that I use, uh, I grow tromboncinos, butternut squash, a lot of heavy stuff, and we yeah. didn't want to warp down. So when you say double layer, you just mean you bought two of them and put them both there. Uh, well, I didn't buy two. I bought one roll, but we just cut two mm. pieces and just kind of layered them on top of each other. That's yeah. a good cheap way to avoid using super heavy duty cattle panel. We wanted cattle panel, yeah. but we didn't have transportation. Mm. Uh, so we went with this Got and it's it. much cheaper. That's that's true. And then T posts right here to connect. Four T posts per uh, corner. That's correct. How much do you think the whole thing cost? 
Uh, 60 bucks. <sighs> That's not bad. Not bad. That's not bad. Mm -mm. So you've got them connected down in these raised beds. We actually staple gun them to the raised beds to the wood. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm growing loofah, cucamelons, beans, um, trombuncinos, you name it, anything that vines up, wow. I'm growing it. I'm growing it. I'm just trying to cover it up. So here we have the cukes. How, how have you found growing these cucamelons? What, what, what is your thought on them? I know that they were popular for a while and you know, now... I personally love them. We, like them. we, my family, we love them. We pickle them. We use them in salads. We actually even cook them in stir fries. We can't get enough of them. Actually, I wish we had more. Mm -hmm. I have to start more. Uh, we, I actually overwintered these two. There's, this is only two. I overwintered them. They woke up in the spring and now they're taking over again. Amazing. Yeah. They, the cucamelons, they kind of produce tubers. So if you leave them underground and there's no, here in San Diego, there's no frost. They wake up in the spring. There it's pretty go. neat. So here in the back, it looks like you've got a little stuff going on. What do you got here? Yeah, so I'm pretty much making uh, little pots that have herbs that I use constantly while cooking. Mm -hmm. So I have my thyme, my basil, my chives, my oregano. I have more oregano here. Um, I started more cilantro and this parsley has already uh, lived its life. It's a two-year-old parsley and that's pretty much like their lifespan so sure. I have to pull it out and put something else there what I like is that it's all right next to the kitchen right next to the kitchen yeah. so this is my entryway to go inside of my house mm -hmm. um, I also have a bigger herb bed that I could show yeah. you let's take a look okay and this is like the last bit of garden here at the place right yes this is a melon cucumber but this is my birdies bed my pride and joy I am slowly turning it into my main herb bed um, as soon as these tomatoes die out it has still a lot of fruit in it mm -hmm. um, i'm just going to start adding more uh, like flowers and just tea herbs and herbs to uh, for culinary purposes mm -hmm. but i have a lot of my thyme um, creeping thyme my uh, tricolor sage this beautiful this basil yeah, that, that's a columnar basil right it is yeah it that is, is insane it is insane i have to chop it down so it it's more less leggy and it comes outward more but i have my stevia uh, my azapote i have my you know herbs just so when we get sick teas and for cooking etc so i know i'm packed a lot into a small a space it's a more or less standard suburban home that's correct right you're growing half your own produce at least your own vegetables if someone's starting out and they do have pretty much this space mm -hmm. what would you say are a couple things that really helped you at the start um Try following people in your own zone. Use what you already have and start very small. Mm -hmm. One bed at a time, then throughout the year you can start building more. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for having me come by. Thanks for coming. We will see you guys on another tour pretty soon. Maybe I'll do a tour around the country. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see what happens. Until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.